All right, we're very early. We've had about five starts, so there's 25 starts, maybe more for a pitcher. If we're going to talk Cy Young, so I'll start with you. But at the beginning of the year, odds makers were saying favorites for the Cy Young: Kluber, Sales, Severino. But who we've seen so far? Who would you go with? Uh, the veteran Justin Verlander, 46 strikeouts, just nine walks, has a 2.6 ERA. I've gotten a chance to play with them. I've never seen anybody command the baseball at max effort and efficiency like this man. Yeah. He's been doing it for a long time, <laughs> General, and he continues to still have life on the fastball. Throws anywhere from 95 to 97. A big-time breaking ball that he could command on both sides of the plate. He's fun to watch. He attacks hitters. He's very aggressive. And with this offense healthy, I can see him winning 16 to 18 oh. ball games this year and being in that Cy Young running all year long. I feel like he's in the Cy Young running every, every year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like a fine yeah. wine, he's bro. A regular. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, you? Uh, I think I'm going to go more on the youth side of okay. things. And I'm going to go with a guy by the name of uh, Tyler Glasnow right now with the Tampa Bay Rays. Obviously, the Tampa Bay Rays have jumped off to an amazing start so far this season. Obviously, the best record in baseball right now, I think 16 and 9. But Glasnow's been amazing. He's pitched five games, he's gone 4 0, and he's leading the league in ERA. Definitely jumped on the bandwagon right now. I like it, though. By far, he's doing a tremendous job. And what's funny about the Tampa Bay Rays is they are the type of team that did. They created the opener. They were the team that used it the most. Mm -hmm. But yet they have some of the best starters in the game right now with Blake Snell, Tyler Glass now, Charlie Morton Absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable that a team can utilize their pitching as well as the Rays do. Yep, and a former Pirate they made the trade for. But still, over time, guys like Kluber and Sale get in a groove. They could change things, obviously. Uh -oh, they need more of a little velo. <laughs> They've been struggling. They've been struggling. Yeah, they, and, and Give a big start. Opportunity to some of the other guys. And for more on the Yankees unending injury news, let's bring in our Fox MLB insider, John Paul Morosi. And uh, JP, always good to see you. Uh, what's the latest on the outfield injuries, the rotating cast of characters that are now in place to step in for the regulars for the Yankees? Well, Chris, good evening. And really, it is miraculous. The Yankees have that six game winning streak right now, given all the injuries they have suffered. The best news I can tell Yankee fans tonight is that tomorrow could bring some good news for Miguel Andujar. Of course, he has that right labrum issue in his shoulder. We could see Andujar actually back now uh, in, by the next week if things go well in this simulated extended spring training game for him tomorrow. And maybe, Chris, the answer for Andujar could be playing some first base moving Luke Voigt to DH, but you see that list of players right there on your screen. It really is remarkable. In fact, Giancarlo Stanton just had a cortisone shot in his left shoulder, which wasn't even the reason he was placed on the injured list. So uh, still some optimism, though, Chris. We could see Stanton taking some swings, at least, sometime next week. I mean, that is absolutely amazing, the amount of injuries on, on one team. The other side of that, and we may see it tonight, the Angels situation now that they're in a close game with the Yankees. Brad Osmus has removed Cody Allen as the closer for the Angels. So what does he plan to do with that spot going forward? Well, Chris, for now, it's going to be a closer by committee approach for the Los Angeles Angels. They're giving Cody Allen's continued diminished fastball velocity. It's been a big concern for them, really even going back to the Indians, for whom Allen pitched last year. So it's really going to be a group of three pitchers right now for the Angels now in the ninth inning. Uh, as you see, Ty Buttrey is one possibility. Luis Garcia, the longtime Phillies reliever, is one option as well. And Ansel Robles, the former member of the New York Mets. And Chris, the Angels would be lucky if this was their only concern, but it's not. Matt Harvey right now has an ERA above eight. He was counted on to be a really key guy in that rotation for them. And Calhoun, of course, he's had some struggles before, as, as Nick pointed out, really now getting that batting stance figured out for him. Justin Bohr has struggled behind Mike Trout. It's been an issue now really up and down the lineup with the exception of Mike Trout. But Chris, certainly tonight, Tommy LaStella playing the starring role because, as you know, Tommy LaStella in Italian means quite literally Tommy the star. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say it. It means Tommy La Stella. Only how many languages do you speak? What is it? Three? Uh, still struggling, Chris, with English, but uh, working on a little bit of Italian. Too. <laughs> I'll, I'll do the jokes. You do the information. All right. Thanks, JP. We'll talk to you later on the show. All right. Italian La Stella, the star. I like that. <laughs>